In this lesson, you will create your first GitHub workflow. You'll start small, and then, over the next few lessons, you'll enhance it with more functionality. Before you create your first workflow, have a look at the GitHub Actions page of your repository. If you haven't added any workflows, you will see some suggested workflows for your repository, for deployments and continuous integration and so on. Feel free to pause this video and investigate some of them by clicking Configure. But please don't add any of the configurations to your project yet. We want to create the workflows from scratch in this course. And by this course, I mean now. Hop over to your editor. I'm using VS Code. But of course, you can use any other editor of your choice. One convenient thing about VS Code, though, is that it's tightly coupled with GitHub. You're welcome. GitHub workflows are based on YAML files with a predefined structure. You can choose any descriptive name you want for the file. However, it must live in a specific folder inside your project, specifically in .github slash workflows. In the spirit of greeting the world, I name my file hello underscore world dot yaml. And now, before adding any content, let's commit this empty file and see how GitHub reacts. Save the file, stage it, and add a commit message, and then push it to GitHub. Now, visit your remote repository in the browser and click the Actions tab again. Instead of seeing the overview of proposed GitHub workflows, now you see a failed workflow run. I know failure never feels great, and these little red icons can be scary, but what you're seeing here is actually good news. Although the run failed, GitHub recognized your workflow file and tried to run it. If you click on the name of the workflow, which is the commit message, you can see the actual error. And it says, no event triggers defined in on. In other words, GitHub wanted to run the workflow, but can't do it without some events that you need to define in some on section of your file. Fair enough. If GitHub wants to be triggered, let's trigger it. In GitHub Actions, a trigger is an event that causes a GitHub workflow to run. There are many kinds of triggers. For example, when a pull request is created, when you push a commit, or when someone opens a new issue. But GitHub offers way more options, like tag commits, requests by another workflow, or even manual triggers that don't run automatically. If you're curious, you can check out the GitHub Actions documentations and look for the events that trigger workflows document. On the screen on the right side, you can see all the events that you can use to trigger workflows. To get started, you'll implement a push trigger for your workflow. Hop over to your editor again and open the Hello World YAML file. In the first line, write on colon push. This means whenever you push something on any branch, the workflow should run. Now, you could commit this change, push it, and see what GitHub makes out of it. But I save you this step and just let you know that GitHub will complain and say that it needs a job to run. Because each workflow must have a single job section. So in the next line, write jobs colon. And inside the job section, you can define one or more jobs. Well, let me be clear here. You must define at least one job and you must give it a name right away. Here, it's a good idea to be descriptive. For example, say underscore hello. The say hello line needs to end with a colon because you're opening a new section. And don't forget to indent the content. Because similarly to Python, indentation is hugely important in YAML. As a rule of thumb, every time a line ends with a colon, you must indent the next line. When you're creating a job, the first thing to do is to define the runner you want to use to run your job. A runner is a GitHub-hosted virtual machine that executes the job for you. GitHub will provision and deprovision the virtual machine so you don't have to worry about maintaining any infrastructure for your GitHub Actions. You can use Windows, macOS, or Linux as virtual machines, but generally, it's a good idea to use Linux unless you have good reasons to use Windows or macOS. To define your runner, 
add a runs on property with the virtual machine. So runs dash on colon and as the virtual machine use Ubuntu dash latest. So that way you're telling GitHub to use the latest Ubuntu version. You could be more specific with the Ubuntu version, but since you're not doing anything Ubuntu specific, it's usually okay to just use Ubuntu latest. Then in the next line, this time in the same indentation level as runs on, add steps, colon. Steps are the main part of a job. So while jobs are the main part of a workflows file, steps are kind of like the main part of a job. They are the actions that need to be performed when executing the workflow. So for example, this. After steps, indent the line again, add a dash, space, run, colon, and then echo, hello world. With the dash at the beginning, you tell YAML that the value of the steps property is a list. Later, you'll work with multiple steps, but for now, this one step is okay, and I would say we're good for now, ready to commit and push the changes. And we've got a green dot. That means your workflow ran successfully. Let's have a look at what exactly GitHub did. When you click on the commit message of a workflow, you can see the detail page of it. You can see that the workflow belongs to the hello world YAML file and that you ran a job named say hello that was triggered on push. If you click the say hello box, then you can see the logs of the workflow. You can see how GitHub set up the job and what operating system was used exactly. In the run echo hello world section, you can see your echo command and the hello world output below. And finally, you can see that the job was completed successfully. And if an error occurs while your workflow runs, you can always go into these logs to investigate what went wrong. So far, you've actually just worked with the workflow files. And besides the readme file, there is not much going on in your repo. So in this lesson, you will create a small Python script, freeze the requirements for your project, and write a test for your project. Head over to your editor and create a new file named hello.py. Inside this file, create a function named greet with the parameter person. And this function should return an F string saying, hello, and then in curly braces, person. When you execute this file directly, then you want to call the greet function. So below the function definition, add if dunder name equals the string dunder main, and then create a print function call, passing in a greet function call with the argument, for example, Chris, which is a very nice name. Now, depending on your Python expertise, this file is very basic. But I don't want to overcomplicate the Python bit in this course, so you can transfer the pattern conveniently to your own code if you want. Before continuing, open the terminal and execute the hello.py file. As you can see, it says, hello, Chris. Perfect. So next, create a virtual environment and install PyTest. Python dash m venf venf. And then activate the virtual environment with source, then bin activate. And once the virtual environment is activated, you can install PyTest with python m pip install PyTest. Since PyTest is a dev dependency, it's a good idea to save it in a requirements file specifically for your dev requirements, python m pip freeze, and then the greater sign, so you're writing the output in a file. And as a file, you can choose requirements underscore dev dot txt. This part is important because later in your GitHub action, you will use this requirements file to install any requirements that a GitHub action needs. All right, and now with PyTest in place, create a new file named test underscore hello dot py. In the file, import PyTest, and then from hello import greet.
and then the test function, test underscore greeting, assert greet, and as an argument, let's choose Teppen, which is also a very nice name, equals hello Teppen. Because when we are calling the greet function and passing in the name Teppen, we expect the output hello Teppen. Okay, perfect. So let's see if the test passes. Hop over to the terminal and run PyTest. And as you can see, a green dot. So the test worked, everything is fine. And then you can commit your changes. There is no need to push right now because the next part is to create a GitHub workflow first and then we can push afterward. In this lesson, you'll create a testing workflow and this workflow should run on every push to the main branch. To save yourself some work, you can duplicate the Hello Python YAML workflow and name it test.yaml. Make sure that the file is in the .github slash workflows folder as a name, you can also use test. And as for the trigger, let's be a bit more specific this time. So far, this test workflow would run on any push to any branch. But you can also be more exact and say, I don't care about any other branches. I only want to run this workflow when the push is to the main branch. So remove the push that you're currently having. And then on the next line, indented push colon and on the next line, again, indented once more, branches, colon, and then on the next line, indented once more, dash, main. So that way, you're telling GitHub to only run this workflow when there is a push on the main branch. Inside the job section, you can remove the run Python section where you check the Python version that Ubuntu has. And then you can rename the run specific Python job to test. As a friendly name, you can write run tests with Python 3.13. Now, since you want to interact with files in your repo, you must make use of the checkout action that was mentioned before in this course. Commonly, you add this action as one of the first steps. So similarly to the setup Python action, you use the users property with a dash in front. So dash users colon actions slash checkout at v4. Then you keep the part that setups Python, and it also doesn't hurt to keep the run Python dash dash version command there. But now comes the more important part. Have a new line with dash run Python dash m pip install dash r requirements dev dot txt. So with a new line where you have the run property, you can think of it like having a new line in your terminal. So after installing the dev dependency, write a new line dash run, and then you want to run PyTest. And that's it. So to see if the workflow works as expected, commit and push your changes, and then hop over to the browser. Pushing your changes triggered two workflows, the test workflow and the former Hello Python workflow. If you click on the test workflow on the run tests with Python 3.13, and there on the run PyTest step, you can verify that your test passed. As you can imagine, you could run a whole test suite that always runs and needs to pass before, for example, you allow merging a pull request. And if this sounded a bit complicated to you, I will have a resource in the summary lesson where you will find a tutorial that goes deeper into the ways how you can use GitHub Actions. In this course, you basically scratch the surface of what GitHub Actions can do. And if you come up with some eloquent GitHub Actions and workflows, feel free to share them in the comments below this video.